Hello, friends. How are you? I hope you are all well and safe. Friends, today we'll be discussing about components, installation, and maintenance of micro irrigation system. We all know that micro irrigation system is very important for all of us. When we talk about a successful drip irrigation or micro irrigation system, it stands on very four important pillars. The first pillar is proper design. The system which you are using shall be designed properly. Then the second very important pillar is the quality of the raw material. And of course, when you are getting this material from Jain irrigation, quality is always assured. Even if your design is proper, even if you are using the best quality of raw material, still, if your installation is not proper, then there is always a chance that your system may not perform very well. So proper installation is also one of the very important factor for a successful drip irrigation system. And above all, a very important pillar is proper maintenance. Even if your design is very good, even if you are using the best quality raw material, even if your installation is perfect, still if the system is not maintained properly, then there is always a chance that your system may not perform well. And out of these four pillars, the first two pillars like proper design and quality of raw material, which is not in your hand. The company Jain Irrigation is providing you the, this support. The, from, uh, by Jain Irrigation representative always helps you to design a proper irrigation system. We supply you the quality uh, material for your drip irrigation system. Installation is, al is also done partially by us or through our agents or through our dealers. But maintenance after a certain period, say after a year or so, it, is, it becomes your, as a farmer, your responsibility. So it is very much important for all of you to understand how the system shall be installed properly and how the system shall be maintained. So let us get deep dive into it. We all know that how the drip irrigation system looks like. There are different components. The first component is like pump. So water is lifting up. Uh, there are uh, you know multiple sources of water. It can be taken up from the rivers as a source. It can be taken up from the uh, well as a source. Drip irrigation system is considered as a pressurized irrigation system. Hence, you require a pump to pressurize the system. Or otherwise, you can use a gravity, but then you require a proper gravity pressure to operate your system. So there is a pump. Then there comes an header assembly. Header assembly is also a very important part of the system, which is a part between the pump and your main line. So it, it encompasses a venturi or a fertilizer tank, a bypass assembly, uh, an air release wall assembly, uh, which is um, uh, most of the time at the uh, head of the pump or at the upstream side of the system. Then it also includes filters and fertigation stations. So header assembly includes all like filter station is also a part of header assembly. Fertigation uh, part, uh, station is also a part of header assembly. Then, then there comes a main line. Main line carries water from your pump, from your water source to all the sections of your drip irrigation systems. We all know that drip irrigation system operates sectionally. Like you don't operate an entire system, entire irrigation, entire field at a time. Suppose you've got an area of 10 hectare. Drip system is not designed to operate, usually not designed to operate all 10 hectares at a time. Because if you want to irrigate all 10 hectares at the same time, then you require a lot of you know, heavy quantity of water. So heavy discharge, uh, higher discharge higher pressures, that means higher capacity of the pump, higher energy consumption. So usually uh, uh, as a proper, as a, uh, as a general design practice, we uh, cut down this entire 10 hectare area or whatever area you have into smaller sections. And mainline connects all these smaller sections. So you operate one section at a time or two sections at a time, depending on the uh, requirements, irrigation requirements, water requirements, and the electricity availability in your area. 
then in between each section there is a pipeline which goes in which is called as a submain pipeline and laterals or drip uh, inline or drip lines are connected to this submain and then you put an emitting device sometimes emitting device is inside the drip tubing which is called as inline tubing sometime emitting devices are on the tubing which are called as online tubing so emitting devices are there then control and safety valves are also very important aspect or features of the uh, or part of the part of any drip irrigation system a control valve is a valve which through which you control the system where are these control valves at the at the inlet of the submain there is a control valve we call it as a ball valve so you control the flow of water coming in then there is a bypass valve in the system which is also a control valve then there is a throttling valve at the venturi sometimes or on the main line to set the pressure required pressure so that is also a control valve and which are the safety valves a non return valve which is which closes down whenever there is a back pressure a check valve uh, an air release valve a submain flush valve these are all safety valves they they are there this these valves are there for the safety of your irrigation system and then there are several uh, if you are going for an automated irrigation system then controllers and sensors can also be part of your uh, drip irrigation system so these are the different components of drip irrigation system friends let us try to understand how these components are what are the proper methodologies to install these components i know most of the times as a farmer you are not actually installing the system but still it is very important for all of you to know how the system shall be installed what is the proper installation methodologies for a drip irrigation system so let us try to understand the installation of drip irrigation system while installation the first thing which comes in your hand is is the design you know a company a company representative has designed a system for you so there is a drawing so you need to understand what drawing it is there are markings for the pipeline so you will understand how the pipeline is going into your field uh, how the main line is going into your field so always ensure that you have a proper design and drawing available prior to installation then the second thing is you will receive the material from the supplier from the dealers always check that material is received from free of all defect you know as a company as a jain irrigation we take all the utmost care to supply you a, a fault free material but during transportation during the handling you know when the system is getting to your field by the time it gets to your field it is like uh, uploaded and downloaded several times the, from the from the factory we combine all the material load it into the truck it goes to the dealers or distributor and then he go down uh, uh, downloads it in the in his go down store in the go down then again it comes to your field again uh, you know uh, downloaded there stored somewhere there is always a chance that this material while uploading and downloading uh, it may get mishandled there may be scratches developed on the metal body of the filter there may be like pipeline if it is dragged or if it is not properly kept then it may get damaged the socket may get, get damaged if the the bundle of the the inline or the tubing if it is not handled properly if it is dragged uh, abusively then it may get punctured so you need to check that material after received it is flawless and while installation also please check the material that there shall not be any defect any fault any damages in the material then check that the installation done, done as we talked about it it is as per the drawing so you have the drawing and always ensure that the person who is installing is not taking any shortcuts he is installing the system as per the drawing you know the depth of the submain if it is mentioned one and a half feet for in your drawing it shall be one and a half feet uh in the field as well it shall not happen that in the field it is one if one feet or 6 inches or something like that so make sure that then always make sure that the drippers which are placed or placed are as per the design this is very important friend you know why you are using a drip irrigation system is to provide water to your root zone 
we are providing water to the soil around your root zone and it is assumed that the soil will get wet and your root zone will covered with this wetted wet pattern but always you know one of the major advantage of drip irrigation system is whenever the water comes out of the dripper and whenever it travels downwards and travels sideways the salt which is there in your root zone gets leached out and then pushed out of your root zone and that's the way and that is the very one of the very important advantage of drip irrigation system is it keeps your root zone salt free and that is why your your root can take up the water very easily but if your your if your root zone if your drippers are not kept properly and it is misplaced then there is there is always a chance that this wetted part may interfere within the root zone and this salty part which is like the salts which are pushed out may rather interfere in the root zone so this is like an adverse situation so always ensure that drippers are placed properly then after the installation keep all the flush walls and lateral ends open and then flush the system thoroughly don't close anything before flush the flushing of the system and then check the system for leakages you know initially when you are you install there is always a chance that the installation is not proper the jointing may be dry jointing or something like that so uh, once the system is commissioned check for leakages uh, check at the walls at the joints at the filters do not allow any leakages in the system and it is always advisable to have a pressure check point at the inlet of the section each section friends this is a pressurized irrigation system and proper pressure is the key of success of the drip irrigation system so always ensure proper pressure in your irrigation system the first component is pump while installing the pump always ensure that the pump which we are using is designed for your drip irrigation system one of two uh, two very important aspect of any pump is its head and the discharge the pump can give so the head and discharge shall match to your requirement of drip irrigation system then the height of the suction shall not be more than as designated by the manufacturer every pump manufacturer tells you what is the pos maximum possible suction height you can use usually it is 20 feet or so if it, if you are going for a monoblock centrifugal surface pump if you are going for a submersible pump of course then it is submerged in the water so ensure that required suction head is available if you are using a surface pump if your pump requires a proper priming uh, uh, then make a proper priming arrangement nowadays most of the pump do not require priming they are self priming pumps but still if you are using some old pumps or uh, something different then priming if the priming is the requirement you should ensure that about the priming keep the suction pipe straight it shall not be angled or you know uh, uh, horizontal or something like that it shall be straight avoid sharp elbows sharp uh, corners you know you we do not want to lose the energy pressure energy which you are you want to utilize for your drip irrigation system in sucking the water so avoid sharp elbows in the suction side use long elbows in which or long bends in which the pressure losses are low always use a very good quality footwall do not compromise on the footwall because this component goes into the water and you do not understand if it is not performing performing very well if the footwall is not performing very well then uh, the the water will not stay in the system and every time you have to fill up the pipeline first you will lose lot of energy in filling up the pipeline you will lose lot of time in filling up the pipeline so always ensure good quality footwall in your irrigation system and while using a pump make all the electrical connections through a trained electrical person safety is very important do not keep any wires open in the field jaan hai to jahan hai then the next component after the pump comes most of the time is hydrocyclone filter you know filter station is very important part of the uh, the system 
filter station comprises of a, a, a cyclonic filter if your water contains sand silt if your if your water source is river water or if your borewell carries a lot of sand then you will use a cyclonic or a hydrocyclone filter or a gumer type of filter if your water contains a lot of algae then you will use, you will be using uh, a sand filter to remove the organic impurities from your, your system and you, even if your water is quite clean still you can or you have to use a minimum screen or a disk filter so let us understand how the hydrocyclone filter shall be installed friends while using a hydrocyclone filter it shall be placed on a stable support all the filters you know um, um, most of the times these filters are installed above the ground they are heavy they require heavy fittings the metal fittings so if the filters are and they, they are close to the pumps so all the vibration if the pump is not installed stably then pump may vibrate and this vibration goes on to the filter and due to the continuous vibration the filter may start leakages so always ensure that the filter stands on a very stable support then typically talking about hydrocyclone filter the hydrocyclone filter shall be installed in such a way that it shall facilitate to open the drain wall easily the purging of hydrocyclone filter is very important you know hydrocyclone filter do not have any screen inside <clears throat> the water is rotated inside tangentially all the dirt due to centrifugal action goes towards the periphery of the uh, cyclone filter and then slowly moves downwards and get settled into the sand collection chamber or the dirt chamber and if the if the dirt is not removed from this dirt chamber and if the dirt chamber is full of impurities or full of sand or silt then your hydrocyclone filter will not work so you need to purge or you need to drain or remove this dirt uh, on a regular frequency depending on the quality of water you have but then this drain wall shall be accessible many times we have seen that this drain wall is you know there is a chamber and this entire dirt chamber is inside the inside any other chamber and this uh, the the wall of this uh, dirt chamber is not accessible so this shall not happen then protect the filter from scratches you know during transportation there is always a chance that there may there may be a scratch develop and even a small scratch may lead to uh, pitting corrosion you know pitting corrosion starts due to the oxidation uh, and this pitting corrosion starts from a very small openings or small scratches you know we provide you a properly powder coated uh, metal filter if you are using a metal cyclonic filter but then during transportation if there are any scratches if apply a simple oil paint or uh, if you even if you do not have the oil paint you can use a simple oil to cover to to break the contact of this scratch from the atmosphere to pro, to avoid the oxidation of this material so that you can avoid this corrosion pitting corrosion if you are using a filter like gumer which is completely plastic filter then there is no question of any corrosion or erosion or something like that so this is all about the hydrocyclone filter if you are using a sand media filter again it shall be on a stable support inlet and outlet shall be given proper support you know <coughs> the inlet and outlet of the sand media filters are a little bit of overhang and it shall be supported properly then check all the candles before filling up the sand you know you need to fill up the sand in a sand media filter before filling up the sand put your hand check all the candles candles means the the small filters black color filter small filter candles which are inside the sand filter shall be checked up for the are they proper Uh, there is no broken candle inside so because once it is once you fill up the sand then you cannot get put your hand inside and you know check it check it up so check before you fill up the sand then fill up the sand approximately 1 inch above the sand level mark you can see a sand level mark for any sand media filter you you should fill up the sand at least 1 inch above this sand level mark so that when when after pressurization when you start the start up the water due to the water pressure the sand will settle down up to the uh, its given level mark 
again protect the filter from scratches if there are any scratches put your uh, put any oil paint or uh, any oil or anything on it cover the pressure gauges you know there are pressure gauges provided cover the pressure gauges or protect the pressure gauges by using a simple polyeth polyethylene sheet a plastic bag around it by wrapping a plastic bag around it so that water may not get or ingress inside this pressure gauge this is a small video this will demonstrate you the the proper installation of the sand media filter so while installing connect the nut and bolt properly there shall not be any leakages put the gasket always ensure that there is a gasket inside these are the candles inside put your hand and check for the candles then put the sand inside we are providing you a specially graded silica sand it is a special grade silica sand the particle size is 0.7 to 1.2 mm so this way you need to install a sand media filter now when we are discussing about the media filters i would like to explain you how the media filter works if you look at the media filter there are there are inlet there is an outlet there is a bypass and then there is a backwash uh, side now water comes in through the inlet then there are slotted pipes inside the media filter water then oozes out through the slotted pipe and get distributed over the sand layer and then percolates down through the sand and while doing see while percolating it uh, percolating down from the sand then all the algae gets like trapped into the sand layer sand media and then clearer water the filtered water goes to the through the outlet this is what the normal irrigation operation is now over the period of time due to the continuous algae uh, coming into through the, the the water the sand layer gets blocked due to the algae or any kind of organic impurities then you need to flush the the sand and for flushing you need to reverse the flow and while reversing the flow you need to close the inlet and outlet valves allow the, all the water to to pass through the bypass then water flow is reversed it comes from bottom side of the sand flows towards upside it fluidized fluidizes the sand it is called as fluidization or the boiling of the sand and due to this boiling of the sand the impurities get up and can be removed out through this backwash valve you need to open up the backwash valve so this is how the sand media filter works while <clears throat> using a sand media filter again in this video i will explain you how the sand media filter works while flushing the uh, uh, or while starting the backwash operation you need to follow some steps open the backwash valve close the outlet valve then open the bypass valve and then step four is close the inlet valve if you follow these steps then there will not be any back pressure on the pump otherwise if you close down the inlet valve first and then open the bypass valve then there is always a chance that by, by the time you are you are opening up the bypass valve there will be a back pressure on your pump and your pump or pipeline may get damaged so always try to follow these steps open the backwash valve first then close the outlet valve then open the bypass wall and then close the inlet wall and again while uh, normalizing the system again follow the similar flow, uh, steps but if you want to avoid all this kind of manual uh, steps and you you feel that your your operator may not or may not be able to understand or may not be able to follow all this uh, you know manual steps for flushing or you your your impurities in your water are too high and you need to often go and clean the media filter then you usually go for a fully automatic media filter in fully automatic media filter all these operation which are manual operations are done automatically here through this animation you can see how this operations are done there are fully uh, these are automatic valves automatic bypass valve automatic inlet valve automatic outlet valve and 
this works at a time whenever you your filter is getting backwash then at, at the same time inlet and outlet valve will be closed and at the same time backwash and bypass valve will be opened up so there will not be any back thrust on your pump any back pressure on your pump the entire operation is done very smoothly so you can use a specially de designed or developed controller fill to clean controller for this operation you can have <clears throat> there are multiple facilities these controllers can provide you you can use a pressure switch a differential pressure switch so that if there is a impurity and you are not nearby it will automatically start the flushing cycle or you can do the flushing on the time basis like you can set for that after every three hours you need to flush your filter for one minute or so if your filter has a very high impurities and which is not getting cleaned up by by the cycle then you can have an alarm in this so after three con consecutive cycle, cleaning cycles even if the <clears throat> differential pressures uh, is not in the normal range then filter will be uh, the filter flushing will be paused and you will you will hear a beeping sound through the controller <clears throat> then while using a sand media filter <clears throat> always you need to after several period like you know even if you are using a fully automatic media filter sand media filter or even if it is a manual sand media filter after every 10 to 15 days you need to open up your sand media filter and put your hand inside stir the sand and why it is to be done because sometimes you know uh, due to the salt in the water due to very high impurities in the water a sand cake is formed on the on the top layer of the sand and this sand cake do not allow you know it will not it, it is like a, a hard clods in the sand and the, those clods will not break up during the normal flushing cycle so you need to break these clods by hand so after 15 10 days you put, you open up the lid you put your hand inside stir the sand break all the clods hard clods inside this is very important for proper functioning of the sand media filter here in this video you know it is explained how this flushing cycle is to be uh, the the uh, cleaning of the sand media is to be done so start the system in a backwash mode open up the lid so all the water will now come out of the lid put your hand inside and clean the sand media inside if there are any hard uh, clods inside break those hard, hard clods so that the sand should always be very smooth freely flowing sand inside the sand media filter then <clears throat> the next part is a screen filter or a disc filter again if you when while you are installing a screen filter or a disc filter it shall be installed on a proper support there shall be proper space to remove the the disc or the screen element inside then do not over tight the lid you know the you know uh, whenever you are closing down the lid of the screen filter do not over tight it otherwise the gasket the rubber gasket may break down then position the drain wall in such a way that it shall facilitate the easy flushing of the screen filter so this is how the screen filter or the disc filter to be installed if you are using a smart clean type of a filter which is a fully automatic suction scanner screen filter then always ensure that you need to have a proper space to remove the 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 uh, screen cartridge inside so if you are using like a smart clean hho type of filter minimum 3.5 meter of the space shall be made available for easy operation of this smart clean filter so let me explain you how the smart clean filter operates usually you know in a normal screen filter you are, your your water goes in through the screen gets screened in the dirt gets collected on the screen over the period uh, the, the dirt accumulates and then you need to open up the screen clean the screen manually and again put it back but in a smart clean filter this is an online filter 
you don't need to remove the screen often there are suction scanner inside whenever there is a differential pressure whenever the dirt accumulates and due to the accumulation of the dirt there is a differential pressure then this flushing cycle will automatically start this wall will open up automatically the purging wall will open up automatically and the rotor will rotate inside and there are suction scanner which are connected to the rotor shaft and it will suck the dirt on the screen filter this is this is the way how the screen the smart clean screen filter operates but always remember that the smart clean screen filter is a screen filter and it cannot really remove the very high algae loads algae if you have a problem of algae then it is better to go for a disc filter or a sand media filter then selection and installation of the venturi you know to venturi or fertilizer tanks are used to inject the fertilizer inside your drip irrigation system so while selecting the venturi you need to understand what is my requirement you know there are multiple venturis available in the market right from very small size of half inch to a larger size of 2 inch or even 3 inch are available but and it has got a different suction rate but only you get very high suction rate in 2 inch size of the venturi you should not go for 2 inch size of the venturi you should understand what is my requirement and how to decide the requirement is how much area you are uh, irrigating and fertigating at time what type of fertilizer you want to use it in how much time period you you want to inject the fertilizer inside your system so these factors decide what is the suction rate you you will be requiring and based on the suction rate requirement you need to choose what is the size of the venturi you need to use while installing the venturi always ensure that the suction pipe shall be below the level of the venturi it shall not be above the level of the venturi it there shall not be any issue in the suctioning suctioning shall be as easy as possible <clears throat> and always ensure that the suction pipe length shall not be very long if if the suction pipe is too long then there may be uh, you know the suction may not be proper or there may be heavy losses during the suction so uh, always avoid very long suction uh, length of the suction pipe here is an example a farmer wants to give fertilizer to his area uh, he he got one and a half acre of banana the banana spacing is 5 feet by 6 feet the flow through his uh, system is 4.84 lps water supplied per plant every plant is getting 16 liter per hour in one hour 16 liter irrigation time is one one and a half hour that means almost 24 hours uh, 24 liters of water is provided in one and a half hours now fertigation time is one hour always remember that whenever you do the fertigation or whenever you apply fertilizer you need to leave some time before and after the fertilizer like initially you start irrigation operate the irrigation the normal irrigation for 10 to 15 minutes then start fertilizer application and close down the fertilizer application before 10 to 15 minutes before finish of the irrigation cycle so you get almost you know uh, 20 to 30 minutes are gone in before and after the fertilizer you get effectively 1 hour for fertigation so in this typical case you are getting 1 hour now for this he wants to give urea this is the peak urea requirement the peak urea requirement per plant is 6.5 gram per plant the system operating pressure near venturi is 2 kg per cm square and total number of plants in one and a half acre is 2 2177 plants now <clears throat> the quantity of urea required is 200 2177 plants multiplied by 6.5 gram of urea which comes about 14.15 kg of urea so 14 kg of urea will be required in uh, then urea is solid you need to dissolve it in a water so what is the solubility of the area you know what is the minimum quantity of water required to dissolve all this 14 kg of urea so solubility of urea is 500 g per liter so if you take 1 liter of water 500 almost half a kg of urea will get dissolved in 1 liter of water so 
accordingly minimum quantity of water required for 14 kg of urea would be approximately uh, 24.82 which is approximately 25 liters that means you will take 25 liters of water dissolve 14 kg of urea in it and this 25 liters of water is to be injected in one hour because you got one hour of one hour available for fertigation so one hour so I'll select the venturi in such a way that the venturi which will give minimum suction rate of 25 liters per hour is the proper venturi for your application now every manufacturer declare uh, the charts similarly jain irrigation also declares some charts for the venturi in this charts there are inlet and outlet pressures given and the motive flow is the flow which passes through the venturi and the suction rate or injection rate is mentioned now if you look at this 3 quarter inch and if your operating pressure was 2 kg per cm square and if you say that around 1 kg of cm square is the you know you throttle the venturi so outlet pressure will be 1 your flow through this venturi is 12.2 lpm and you get around 37 lph of suction rate so 37 of lph of suction rate is quite higher than your requirement of 25 liter per hour uh, suction rate for the given example so you can choose 3 quarter inch of the venturi which is sufficient you can go for higher size of the venturi provided that you have the required motive flow you know the motive flow is the flow which passes through the venturi if this motive flow is not matching to your system flow or if it is higher than your system flow your venturi will not suck the water will rather come out of your venturi so always ensure that your selection of venturi is according to the motive flow available according to your suction requirements while installing the venturi always ensure that they, you know in venturi there are small convergent cone and divergent cone convergent cone is all cone is always from the inlet side so always keep the convergent side the smaller cone side towards the inlet if you are using fertilizer tank now fertilizer tank is a closed pressure vessel now how to calculate because in fertilizer tank you cannot really calculate the suction rate but then on the basis of time you can inject the fertilizers you know uh, as per our experimental results we declared few charts and these charts are available in our product catalog say for example you are using a fertilizer tank of 60 liters capacity and your your differential pressure is say 0.3 kg per cm square then within 10 minutes your 60 liters of fertilizer will go into the system now what is the difference between venturi and fertilizer tank is venturi requires higher differential pressure you know you require to throttle wall to a larger extent around 0.8 to 1 kg per cm square while in fertilizer tank your differential pressure requirement is quite low but then venturi gives you a constant suction rate while in fertilizer tank initially the concentration of fertilizer is very high and eventually as the water gets added into it it gets diluted so initial concentration of fertilizer uh, is uh, uh, concentrated and over the period it gets diluted it doesn't matter if you are giving fertilizer to a single section but then if you are giving fertilizer to multiple sections at a time then fertilizer tank you have to be choose carefully then these are the header assemblies which are used in a system header assemblies gives you an easy access and easy installation possibilities it has you know all in one kind of a thing it has got a venturi uh, you know assembly a throttle wall a bypass wall and air release wall everything in one assembly so it becomes very easy you know there are nuts and bolts only few nuts and bolts are to be tightened uh, just to install a system it looks nice the bed great the system is leakage free so it is always advisable to use an header use a proper header assembly in your irrigation system there are many types of header assemblies available with jain irrigation you can choose uh, any one uh, as per your requirements then there comes an installation of the main line main line is most of the time pvc pipeline sometimes it is hdp pipeline in uh, northeast areas in himachal and all where cold region in cold region uh, we use hdp uh, as a main line now while using uh, while installing the uh, pvc main line 
always ensure that while you store the pipe in your in your field or anywhere do not overload it otherwise the the pipe which is at the bottom side may get you know pinched off uh, or get damaged the socket may get damaged do not drag the pipeline or throw the pipeline make the trench of sufficient depth standard depth for the main line is around one and a half to two feet depending on your requirement so two feet better you know lower deeper is the better avoid snaking of the trenching snaking in the sense like you know the trench shall be clear uh, alignment of the trench, uh, trench shall be straight it shall not be snaking you know or wavy type of things remove any sharper objects like stones or anything from the bottom of the trench put soft layer of the so layer of a soft soil you know this uh, this will act as a cushion for the pipe you know why this is to be done because whenever you operate a system the system will always vibrate a little bit and if there is a sharp stone below the pipeline due to the continuous vibration the stone may you know damage the pipe slowly and you know pipeline may get break or da damage or leak from that point so the, the the there shall be a soft soil layer as a cushion for the pipeline after every 500 uh, 300 to 500 meters put an expansion uh, you know uh, block or a thrust block in the pipeline which will not allow the expansion of the pipeline any material has a as a property of expansion and contraction so as the pipeline the pvc pipeline or any pipeline so you need to put a thrust block to keep the pipeline secure it will not move from its place the vibration will not propagate through the pipeline if you are putting proper thrust blocks now we all know that the pvc pipeline is not a good uh, material for uh, ultraviolet rays so if your pvc pipeline is exposed to sunlight then that is why you know most of the time pvc pipelines are under the ground below the ground to avoiding the direct contact of sunlight but due to some reason if you are you have to take the pipeline outside then just wrap some gunny bags around it so that there will the direct contact with the sunlight will be avoided always put some expansion jo joints at every or expansion loops at every 300 to 500 meter which will allow little bit of expansion and contraction to the pipeline you know otherwise if there is there are no expansion uh, you know uh, facilities given in the pipeline whenever there is a, when the temperature goes high and then whenever the pipeline expands this expansion will stress the weakest part of the system, uh, the pipeline and weakest part of the pipeline is uh, either the wall joint or the 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 solvent cement jointing uh, which are which is weak and then that is why most of the time in summer season you will see that some of the pipeline leaks from the joints why it leaks from the joints in summer season because as the temperature goes high the, due to the expansion and contraction stresses the uh, the this uh, solvent cementing gets loosened up if the, it is not done properly and then it leaks from that point always ensure proper air re release arrangement in, inside your pipeline you if your pipeline is long or short whatever it may be ensure air release arrangement see this air is like a hidden enemy in in your system if this if this air is not removed out of your pipeline it may get accumulated at the, at the top end of the pipeline and from the top end you cannot remove it so what will it, what it, it will do is it will reduce the cross section of the pipeline that means you purchased a pipeline of say 4 inch diameter and ultimately utilizing a pipeline of 2 inch diameter then why you are purchasing a 4 inch why you are uh, investing in 4 inch pipeline so always ensure that the air is getting removed out of your system air is a hidden enemy of your pipeline now while using a pvc pipeline you need to do, put up solvent cement you need to join the two pipes with the solvent cement so proper solventing is very much important you know solve what the solvent cement is solvent cement is not like a adhesive like fevicol or something like that it is an acid based pvc resin mixed uh, with some drying agents and some other chemicals using which whenever you apply a solvent cement you apply a layer of it the acid inside the solvent cement will soften the pvc material of the pipeline 
and when you you fuse the two material and uh, you rotate it it gets homogenized and the P, the pvc resin which is there in the the solvent cement will takes uh, or will fill up the gaps small gaps inside to give you an intact joint so always ensure that whenever you are using a solvent jointing do this solvent cementing in the morning time or in the evening time do not do it or do not avoid to do it in the afternoon time when sunlight or the temperature is very high because there the drying agent will immediately try to dry out the solvent and you may not get enough time for the jointing apply the while applying the solvent cement apply solvent on the socket first and then on the pipe you know the socket and pipeline are to be fused or joined together apply on the socket first and then on the pipeline why it is to be done because when you apply the solvent cement on the socket which is shadowed part so solvent will not immediately dry up and then apply on the pipeline which is open part uh, so you the it is not exposed for for longer period of time to dry up now while jointing the the, the pipes insert the pipeline fully do not apply extra solvent cement because additional solvent cement when you push the pipeline inside the additional solvent cement will get into or slide into the pipeline and it will do its work if the acid inside the solvent cement will scratch or soften the pipeline inside and that is why you know uh, the pipe sometimes breaks near the solvent joint it is because of the additional or extra solvent cement used then after application of the solvent cement proper solvent cement put the push the pipe in gently inside rotate the pipe so that the the, the the you will get a homogeneous jointing keep it for some period which is called as a curing period and then clean up the entire pipeline with using some dry clothes you know there shall not be additional solvent cement on the pipeline also now how much quantity of solvent cement to be used is given as per the indian standard there is an indian standard for solvent cement is is 14482 depending on the size of the pipe it gives you number of joints per liter how many number of joints you can do per liter so whenever you purchase a drip irrigation system you know how many number of joints you may be having for a given pipeline suppose you are using say 63 mm of the pipe then in 1 liter you shall be able to do 125 joints so always ensure that the person who is installing your system shall shall do 100 if it is not 125 if it is if he is doing say 150 number of joints that means he is applying low quantity of solvent cement if he is doing 100 joints only or uh, 90 joints only that means he is applying extra quantity of solvent cement then there comes a ball wall a sub main ball wall <coughs> or the control wall at the inlet of the sub main shall be installed properly <coughs> how it shall be installed you know the ball wall is a portable kind of a wall there are union nuts you can open up the nuts while installing the ball wall the pipeline shall not be under any stress it, it shall be properly aligned it, it shall be stress free the ball wall has you know one side seat support uh, fixed always if when you open up the ball wall uh, you will see that one side is fixed and you can remove ball and everything from other side so fixed side shall always be on the downstream side so that any water pressure will not push the ball out or any disturb the ball's position then do not use any spanner you don't require any spanner to tighten the union nuts just by hand tightening you can easily uh, join the ball wall cover the pipeline supporting walls with the gunny bags again to avoid the any exposure to the sunlight so this is how you need to cover up the ball uh, the entire assembly with the gunny bag to avoid the direct exposure to the sunlight now while installing the submen or uh, the drip line to the submen you need to make holes on the pipeline put the proper grommet the, there are different types of grommets available with gen irrigation now the recently launched uh, grommet the new grommet is uh, 
top hat type of grommet which is very easy to install install the start connector or the take off properly this is very important because the submen goes inside the soil and if it is leaking if the if it is leaking then it curdles and then you know lot of other trouble for repairing and maintenance is required if the submen grommets are not installed properly now the at the end of the submen you you use usually a flush wall while using a flush wall the flush wall height shall be hardly 4 to 5 inch above the or maximum 6 inch above the ground because if it is too high then it may not be able to push because already at the end of the submen the pressure is very low you the the heavier particle may not get you know pushed out of the system or uh, flush out of the system if the submen flush wall's height is too high so the height of the submen above the ground shall be only 6 inch maximum if you are using inline tubing just few recommendations for inline it is always recommended to use proper winders while installing the inline you know with winders you can easily without any folds or anything you can easily uh, lay the inline it is recommended if you are using excel type of emitter which is flat emitter it is always recommended to keep the dripper upright upside while keeping the dripper upside it will reduce you your maintenance uh, issues or blockages of the dripper will be reduced down to a larger extent so it is always recommended to you use uh, if you are using a flat dripper in a upright position do not pull the inline while laying you know do not pull it very forcefully keep the tubing at a proper position avoid snaking like the the tubing is going like this avoid that kind of snaking and flush the tubing before commissioning this is how you need to install the inline tubing now friends in brick or in nutshell we have seen different installation practices and what is the proper installation methodologies to be followed for different components of drip irrigation system let us get into the maintenance of drip irrigation system and before go getting into the maintenance of drip irrigation system always ensure that your your water quality is tested your soil is tested you know how your water is it is saline which what kind of impurities it has and all those things now while doing the maintenance of the system we have divided this maintenance schedule in daily maintenance fortnightly maintenance like every 15 days what kind of maintenance practices are to be followed monthly or bi monthly maintenance and half yearly or yearly maintenance now what what are the tasks to be done in daily maintenance daily in the morning you came down into your, in your field always ensure and check that the pressure at the filter inlet at the submen is as per the design pressure you know this this will take hardly 10 minutes always take a, a portable pressure gauge with you always keep a portable portable pressure gauge with you measure the pressure at every point the you know measuring the pressure is like you know the doctor is checking with the stethoscopes in your heart and checking the heart beats and he ensures that your if your heart is running well then your your system the body system is running well that is the same thing in the in this so if your system has got the is running as per the design pressure your drippers are performing very well no issue in the system flush the screen filter media filter cyclonic filter water the filter you have uh, every day after end of irrigation cycle so roj ka hisab roj yani every day's dirt is to be removed on every day this is rather than allowing that dirt to settle and then dried up then check for the uniformity of discharge you know drip system is provided there to get uniform distribution of the water and if that uniformity is not there and why the uniformity may not there because if your soil is not properly prepared if there are big clods in the system Uh, and or due to any other issues if the wetting pattern is not getting developed then you need to check that the discharge is, the discharge coming out of your dripper is uniform or not so you can measure randomly that the discharge of the dripper is proper or not whether if i purchase suppose 4 liter per hour dripper it shall deliver at least 10% plus minus 10% of the discharge then check the position of the drippers always try to keep the dripper at the right position do not 
uh, move the drippers often, quite often, and then flush the end of the uh, the uh, flush the submain at the end of the irrigation cycle. So this entire practice will take hardly half an hour or uh, 45 minutes. But then, if you do if you do this daily maintenance regularly, your 50, 70 percent of the maintenance issue will get resolved. Your system may not require or uh, any kind of maintenance if all these steps are followed on day to day basis. Then fortnightly maintenance schedule. What we done in days? Random. You need to flush the lateral every 15 days. Like this is a part of your daily maintenance schedule. But then the lateral which is chosen on the day one shall be repeated on day 16th. So within 15 days, you, you divide the number of, because there are a number of laterals in your field, maybe 3000 or 4000 laterals. But then you need to divide them in such a way that every day you are flushing few laterals so that the first lateral which is flushed on day one will be again on, on flushing or for flushing on day 16. So within 15 days, you are flushing all the laterals in your system, in your deprecation system. If you are using openable dripper, open and clean the dripper if it is required. Or if you are using a, a inline dripper, and if you feel that the, the discharge out of the dripper is a bit low, then gently hammer it using a wooden stick. Open the lid of the media filter. We have seen how the media filter is to be clean. Open the lid of the media filter. Allow water to come out. And then take the element of the screen filter. Rinse it clear uh, and again repeat it. This video, this is shown how to discharge method. Take a simple can with a simple stopwatch or you watch, you can measure what is the amount of water the system is giving. This is how you can open the dripper. If you are using a pressure compensating dripper and if you have some ant problem or a spurting problem, you can use the plug. It is always advisable to use a proper auger or have an auger with you to ensure the proper wetting pattern in, the, uh, in your system. Auger is a very simple device. Here in this photo, it is shown. Even local fabricator can make an auger for you. Just with the auger, go, go, while even you, you are moving inside your system, in, in your field, just push this auger up to the wetted area or up to the root zone depth. Take the soil sample out. Check whether the proper wetting is achieved or not. Then in monthly or bi-monthly maintenance schedule, you have to go for acid treatment or chlorine treatment. Now, whether to go for acid treatment or whether to go for a chlorine treatment depends on what type of impurities you are getting. If you are uh, seeing salt as an impre salt precipitation, then you need to go for acid treatment. If you see bacterial slime or a lot of algae inside your system, you need to go for chlorine treatment. Or it is always better or advisable to go for both the treatments, not at a time, but alternately. Like one month you go for acid treatment, next month you go for a chlorine treatment so that your system is properly maintained and is kept clean. In half yearly, we will be seeing acid treatment and chlorine treatment in short while. In half yearly maintenance, you need to see what the quality of the sand inside the sand media filter because due to the continuous backflush or due to the continuous abrasion, the sand particle gets may, may get rounded up. So you need to check and you need to change the sand media if it is required. Usually sand media lasts there for one year or one, more than that. But depending on the number of flushing cycle, you need to check it. Then check the system for wear and tear. Check the, make sure the pump maintenance is done properly after every six months. Run the system daily. See, there are, these are the few general maintenance tips. Run the system daily, keep the system wet. We always uh, tell our customer that keep your system wet. 
do not allow your system to get dried up because when the system is dried up the salt which are there inside the water which are dissolved will get accumulated or precipitated inside your system so run the system daily it is always recommended to use water soluble fertilizer because these fertilizers are acid based fertilizers so it is a kind of an acid treatment for your system if you are going for a sub surface irrigation system avoid root intrusion root intrusion happens due to the water stress so avoid try to avoid root intrusion while recoiling after the season whenever you require to recoil the system always prop recoil the system and keep them properly on the burn away from the squirrels and rats if you are keeping near the you know any big tree big trunk tree in your inside your field the squirrels and rats which are nearby will you know uh, chew the the tubing rat is a major issue sometimes if rat is an issue what how can you rat or squirrel uh, both are the uh, major menace in the system if squirrel is an issue squirrel usually you know uh, bite or chew your tubing to drink the water so when your squirrel is an issue when you observe that squirrels are there because how to observe the squirrel that squirrel if you observe that only few tubes which are near to the last trunk tree in your field are getting chewed up or getting damaged then it may be a squirrel problem then if the squirrel is an issue put a, a galvanized uh, plain sheet around the trunk of the tree so that squirrel cannot really you know walk over it or cannot climb on the tree then the squirrel will leave that tree and go to some other tree if rat is an issue rat is a major issue if the rat is an issue it is always better to go for you know always better to keep the continuous wetted strip because rat usually you know has a fear to cross the wetted area so keep the uh, system wet all the time keep the wetted area always then while doing uh, you know it is always better to go for a rat campaigning while uh, uh, eliminating the rat issue rat campaigning while, while you do the rat campaigning because you know killing or uh, uh, killing few rats in your field may not really help the next day few more rats will come from other fields in your field so it is always better to go for a community rat campaigning so all the farmers will come together for the first day they will look for the bores in the in the in the field close down all the bores again go for the ne next day go for the, the the same bores check which bores are opened up that means the rats are there then keep some rat killing uh, you know uh, for, uh, components like pakoras or something uh, on these bore holes and kill all the rats at a time one of the natural way of controlling the rat population is do not kill snakes in your field snakes naturally controls the rats in your field snakes are your friends they are not your enemies now let us talk about the acid and chlorine treatment injection of acid and chlorine or injection of, of chemical inside your system is called as chemigation these are the water quality parameters while you check the water quality you should look for this like conductivity shall not be more than 3 3 and above is very severe like your your system has got lot a lot of salt quantity available or total hardness or carbonates or bicarbonates you know all these things i am not going in details of all these charts you can pause the video here and you can see what are the different parameters or you can call me any times ask me or ask our representative for this charts now there are different chemicals uh, or impurities inside um, uh, inside the water how to identify that what why what is the problem and what is the issue now you all know that the the, the salt will precipitate inside your drippers or drip system and may try to plug your drippers now if this precipitation is looks like a whitey whitish color film around the dripper whenever the water comes out of the out of the dripper you know water will evaporate but whitish color salt you know layer will be seen if this color is white or slightly yellowish color that means it is a calcium or magnesium salts and if it is if it is too high then you may have to go for continuous acid injection we we'll look into it how the acid injection is to be done then precipitation of calcium carbonates while the solution while in solution there will not be any problem like calcium carbonate is dissolved 
if it is dissolved it can go out of but then as soon as you stop the system and the system the tubing is exposed to sunlight it may precipitate and you will find white crystals like crystal like uh, uh, crystal like things around the dripper that means it is due to the carbonates again precipitation due to iron so in some areas of, the, of our country like in bhuj in kutch area in some part of andhra pradesh uh, some part of bengal this iron is a major issue <coughs> your drip system can immediately get plugged if your iron content in your, in your system is more than 0.2 ppm even like if it is 0.5 or 1 ppm then you, it is not recommended to use drip irrigation system or if it is if you have to use drip irrigation system it is recommended to go for a proper treatment to remove the iron because iron which is ferrous form like ferrous oxide get oxidized and turn into the solid form of iron which is ferric oxide so ferric form which is precipitated inside which it happens immediately and how you observe that this is a iron precipitation is with a reddish color a reddish color will be seen if the the precipitation is reddish then it is due to iron precipitation always remember that iron sometimes comes with the manganese and mag if the manganese is also precipitating in in the your system then you will see a brownish color a dark brown color instead of reddish color if the color is dark brown then that means it, the manganese is also present in this uh, in your water now sometimes algae is also a major issue if you are using a farm pond or a stored water from a reservoir then algae uh, comes into the system and may plug the system may plug the dripper and can grow inside your system also so <clears throat> if you want immediate control of algae you can go for copper sulfate but remember copper sulfate is toxic in nature so you, you have to be careful while using copper sulfate but the better treatment is the chlorine treatment we will be see how to do the chlorine treatment now let us see again the bacterial precipitation of sulfur or sulfide sometimes you know if the system has some bacteria then bacteria can also pre precipitate some chemicals like sulfur or sulfides or even iron precipitating bacteria are there so if if the precipitation is due to bacteria then acid treatment may not really help to remove this uh, Uh, you know precipitation you can need to go for chlorine treatment so you need to understand whether the precipitation is due to the chemical precipitation or whether it is a bacterial precipitation now let us look into the procedure for acid treatment for acid treatment you can use uh, these different types of acid of course but generally used or commonly used acids are hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid phosphoric acid and nitric acid Now, how to calculate the acid quantity of acid? Take the measured quantity of source water. Approximately 10 liter of water is to be taken up. Take the acid to be injected in a can. So, acid. If you if you if you are injecting or if you have decided to go for say hydrochloric acid, <coughs> then take this acid in the can. Then using a dropper. you know usually you use a dropper for this medicine application and there are marks on it 1 ml 2 ml 3 ml so measure those 1 ml take 1 ml of drop uh, acid put it inside this 10 liter and measure the ph here in this video the entire procedure is given so you are now measuring usually for acid treatment you need to maintain the ph of the the source water at 4 ph that means it is my acid the water is to be taken, uh, converted to acidic water and how to ensure that what quantity of acid will be required to to bring my uh, ph of the source water to 4 ph is this is the way you can count, uh, calculate so in 10 liters of water you are adding small uh, uh, quantity of acid measure small quantity of acid adding it stir it check the ph at, at the point when the ph is turns to be 4 <clears throat> using a litmus paper then you know that for say 25 10 liters of water you require say 10 ml of acid then for uh, suppose your system flow is 25 cubic meter per hour 
assuming that whenever you operate the system you control the venturi so only half of the flow goes through the system so if you are uh, assume that this 50% of the flow of 25 cubic meter per hour is 12500 liters so for 10 liter of water you require 10 milliliter of acid so for 12500 liters of water how much quantity of acid would be required so these are very simple calculations so you require around 12 liters of acid here so this is the way you can calculate the quantity of acid required for acid treatment now these are the very uh, there are various ways of injection rate calculation so how to calculate at what rate your acid to be injected inside depending on your system flow rate to s depending on the, on the acid quantity in ml to achieve say now we see we have seen that 10 liter for 10 liter we required 10 ml of acid that means for 1 liter we required 1 ml of acid so 1 ml will be here and volume of test samples in liter is 1 liter here so this is the way you can calculate here is an example given what is the suction rate or injection rate because then you, you your venturi shall be able to deliver this kind of suction rate this is the way you can calculate the injection rate required for acid treatment for your venturi remember even if your venturi is delivering say now we are in as per this example suppose a farmer wants to go for acid treatment he took 10 liter of source water and after adding 15 ml of acid 4 ph is achieved <coughs> system flow rate is 7 lps now as per this formula as per this calculation the qa the injection rate comes out to be 37.8 liter per hour now as per 37 point, suppose now the farmer has to choose the venturi which is uh, which can deliver 37.8 liter per hour but now if he has already purchased a venturi and suppose this venturi has got 50 liters per hour or 70 liters per hour of the suction rate then you need to control the suction rate by controlling the small throttling wall or something like that because acid should not go to the higher quantity or even in the lower quantity in the system now all these calculations you don't require to do often like after every for every acid treatment you don't require to measure up uh, water uh, and quantity uh, acid and everything if your water quality is not changing too often you can this is a one time calculation you can maintain a chart that what is the quantity of acid required uh, suppose this is chart or our representative can make this chart for you say plot this is an example only say plot one which is banana which is five acres time required for acid and chlorine injection is 30 minutes so within 30 minutes you have to go for acid injection so that acidic water will reach to the last dipper what shall be the inlet pressure maintained at the at the venturi or fertilizer tank quantity of acid required in liters or if you are going for a quantity of chlorine then what is the quantity of chlorine in gram which is for the bleaching powder actually so you can maintain this uh, this chart so which will be a, as a ready reckoner for you for doing the acid or chlorine treatment now sometimes for the farmer it becomes very tedious to do all these calculations and keeping the charts and everything if you feel that I cannot really do this calculation and I don't want to do the, as this calculations, do not avoid acid treatment <clears throat> just because you don't want to do any calculations. There are some easy methods and quick methods available. Rather than you know doing any kind of calculation, see what is the objective? The objective, the final objective is the last dripper shall deliver the acidic water which is 4 in pH. Now you can measure the pH of the water using the litmus paper. So start injecting the acid. So you are not doing any calculations now. The acid is directly going into the system. Now immediately after the venturi, suppose you are using a venturi injector for the acid injection. After the venturi, suppose there is a screen filter. Immediately open up the drain all of the screen filter, take small quantity of water, check what is the pH. If the pH is too high, like say pH is 6, that means acid quantity is still low. You can increase the quantity of acid. So total the wall, uh, venturi wall, so that more quantity of acid will start going in. Again, open up the, the, the nearest faucet, nearest, nearest position, check the pH again. 
if the ph is too low this time say 2 ph now if the ph is too low that means you you throttle too much now open up the throttling wall little bit so with this trial and error method you can set 4 ph once the ph 4 is set then allow the acid to get into the system go to the last dripper and wait for the water to come the acidic water to come so you can uh, with a small litmus paper you can always check what is the ph moment the ph the paper turns it colors to uh, the orange color which which signifies poor ph you need to stop your system keep the system stopped for almost 24 hours minimum 6 hours are required for reaction but if the uh, salt precipitation is too high then go for longer period of time allow more time to react with the with the salt uh, for the acid to to react with the salt and once the ends of the lateral and submen uh, once this is done open up the ends of the lateral uh, and submen and flush the system thoroughly so that all the dissolved salt which is dissolved in the acidic water will get or will be thrown out of your system now let us look at the chlorine injection method you know most of the farmers you go for acid treatment but hardly few farmers go for chlorine injection because they do not understand the importance of chlorine injection the chlorine injection is to be done if your water contains lot of algae or bacteria inside your water now due to the chlorine your growth of bacteria will be inhibited or growth of algae will be stopped now what are the different sources of chlorine either you can go for calcium hypochlorite which is we call it as a bleaching powder which has 65% of pre available chlorine that means if you go for 1 kg of bleaching powder you will get 650 g of chlorine inside it then sodium hypochlorite which is a liquid form of chlorine you know in uh, in uh, in these seasons you always get uh, that chloro vat or something like that i had two drops of water in your matka to clean so that two drops of water or that liquid form of chlorine is nothing but sodium hypochlorite which has got lo little lower uh, available 15% of the chlorine is available or you can use chlorine gas nobody uses chlorine gas this is mostly for industrial application or for the very large areas it is possible to use chlorine gas also now depending on whether you are going for sodium hypochlorite or bleaching powder or uh, sorry liquid uh, so, so chlorine or calcium hypochlorite which is bleaching powder or chlorine gas you can calculate the quantity of or injection rate required for the chlorination now i will not again go into the mathematics i, I know mathematics is not very welcome uh, subject for all of us but this is there in the screen you can calculate using this formulas so these are the formulas which are there for the uh, calculation of injection rate for chlorination so if you are using liquid chlorine sodium hypochlorite or bleaching powder a solid form of chlorine or a chlorine gas you can use these formulas here are some examples suppose uh, let us see at this example of chlorination using calcium hypochlorite is to achieve 20 ppm of chlorine concentration at the injection point and he has the system a solution of calcium hypochlorite of 100 g per liter is made up that means chlorine or bleaching powder is water then he has to maintain the ph to achieve 20 ppm of chlorine inside so here whenever he starts injecting the uh, uh, chlorine chlorinated water inside his system he has to maintain this suction rate or injection rate to achieve this 20 ppm this is how you can calculate the chlorine uh, requirement now again if you want to do, uh, what is the procedure of chlorine treatment follow one time setting which we you know we have seen the chart so follow that chart so in this chart you will know important order required calculate the volume of water required to be treated if uh, your system chlorate if you do not know what is the volume of water required to be treated why volume of water is required to be calculated because you want to treat your system 
don't expect water with acid or chlorine to get out of your system, flow out of your system. Your, your water, the volume of pipeline to be filled up is the volume of water to be treated. So calculate and how to calculate is if you do not know uh, the flow rate, the flow rate is most of the time as per the design calculation is written there on the screen filter or sand filter, whatever the filter you use, the, the flow capacity or the nominal flow rate is mentioned on this. Suppose you are using a screen filter which is having 25 cubic meter per hour, which is two inch screen filter. That means your system design flow rate is 25 cubic meter per hour. Now, suppose you want to do this chlorine treatment in 30 minutes of time. That means in 30 minutes, if suppose in one hour, 25,000 of liters of water is going in, that means in 30 minutes, only 12,500 liters of water will go in. Now, your chlorine concentration requirement is say 20 ppm. One ppm means one milligram per liter. That means 20 ppm is 20 milligram per liter. So for one liter, you require 20 milligram of chlorine. So for 12,500 liters of water, how much chlorine would be required? So as per the calculation, it would be around 250 gram. Now we, we saw that bleaching powder has got 65% of free available chlorine. But this 65% is also when the bleaching powder is freshly manufactured. But you don't get fresh manufactured bleaching powder. You know, you purchase it from some hardware store. It is there in the shelf for several months, maybe. So some amount of chlorine is already gone out. But we do not know how much quantity of chlorine is there inside that bleaching powder. Let us assume it as a 50% chlorine available. So considering 50% of the chlorine available in the bleaching, uh, bleaching powder, when you require 250 gram of chlorine, that means when you take 500 gram of bleaching powder, you will get 50%. That means 250 gram of chlorine uh, in it. So this is the way. So now you have calculated that I required 500 gram of bleaching powder for my chlorine treatment. Now take this 500 gram of bleaching powder in the bucket. Add required quantity of water. Now how much quantity of water to be added is you know what is the suction rate as per the injection rate calculations that how much quantity of uh, you know chlorinated water has to be has to be injected in 30 minutes of time so take that much quantity of water dissolve this bleaching powder in the water take another uh, bucket put a cloth on it a filter cloth maybe a simple handkerchief or whatever it may be and filter out the calcium out of this so only the chlorinated water is now remained and you have to inject this chlorinated water inside the system for next 30 minutes of time. Now there as, as like in litmus paper, there are chlorine papers are also available. So you can have those chlorine papers to check what is the PPM of, uh, of the last dripper. So whenever the, from the last dripper, you will receive the water having 20 PPM of chlorine. That means what the chlorinated water is now reached to each and every corner of your field. Now again, close down your system or submain for next 24 hours. Allow this chlorinated water to kill all the bacteria, algae inside your system and flush after 24 hours, flush the system thoroughly with a higher pressure so that all these killed bacteria, algae will get flushed out of the system. While doing the acid treatment, you need to follow certain precautions. Do not go for acid and chlorine treatment at a time. Otherwise, chlorine gas, you know, chlorine will react with acid and a lot of chlorine gas will come out and which may suffocate you. Always use hand gloves and goggles for your safety precautions. Do not inhale the chlorine fumes. Chlorine can suffocate you. Chlorine is toxic gas. It can suffocate. Do not allow any children to be nearby whenever you are doing chlorine treatment. If by mistake acid spill on your body, wash that portion of body with a lot of cold water and detergent soap. Take and take medical treatment. Backflush the filter thoroughly before and after acid treatment. After acid treatment and chlorine treatment, take remove the screen of the screen filter and flush it and clean it thoroughly so that the acid or chlorine, which has very strong oxidizing agent, may not corrode the screen of the screen filter. Then there are some useful tips which we rather learn from the farmer friends only. Keep the system always wet, which we have seen. Run the system as per the design pressure. 
before changing the water source analyze to the water analysis because changing the water source is changing the uh, you know impurities in the water so always do the water analysis when you change the water source make a habit of checking pressure up and wetting button in the at various points in the field let it be an habit keep extra emitters at of a given discharge after the last end of the last lateral this is a very important tip and very simple tip because sometimes you know we talk about pressure we talk about flow but your field operator who is layman who is novice do not understand this pressure and flow language and sometimes flow pressure also fluctuates due to voltage fluctuations and many other reasons so it is always better for him to tell him that okay keep some extra drippers at the last end of the last laterals put a bucket is there mark the required volume of water which you need to provide to the to your plant suppose your plant requires 20 liters of water per per irrigation mark 20 liter in this bucket and tell your field operator that whenever the water is filled up to this 20 liters close down the system this is very simple he do he can easily understand this so if you follow this he don't need to bother about pressure and flow and any other technical things now let us understand some of the system diagnosis you know diagnosis is very is very important whenever you approach to a doctor he diagnose you for the uh, proper to understand the proper reason of the issue so similarly you need to understand uh, you need, shall be able to uh, an, analyze your system or diagnose your system so understand the system design note down the design flow and pressure at various points so always you should be able to know that okay at this submain inlet the pressure shall be 1.5 kg per cm2 whether i am getting 1.5 kg per cm2 or not the pressure is low either uh, either uh, the filter is blocked or wall is not closed uh, open up fully or something like that then check the sand of the sand filter that is this is also very important diagnosis point check the screen of the screen filter then at the end go to the end of the lateral take a white cloth open up the last end of the lateral open up the lateral allow the water to, to flow through the cloth you know all the impurities which are coming into your system will get settle will try to get settle at the last end of the lateral so last end of the lateral will tell you what are the impurities coming inside your system so whenever the you you allow this water to flow through the some simple cloth and you observe some salt precipitation some salt crystals that means you need to go for acid treatment if you observe some algae something like that then that means you have to go for chlorine treatment put your finger inside the tubing and if you feel very slimy chiknash jaisa uh, dikhta hai ya slimy feeling is there that means bacterial precipitation is there that means you have to go for chlorine treatment so these are the simple diagnosis tools which can tell you whether to go for chlorine treatment whether to go for acid treatment whether my system is performing very well what is what is the issue it may be happening in my system so these are the diagnosis tools very simple diagnosis tools which you can follow so friends we talked about different components of drip irrigation system how to install these components and how to maintain those components and above all we also studied or looked into de in details about the acid and chlorine treatment of your drip irrigation system you as our customer are very important visitors to our premises or to us and we always depends on you you are not dependent on us so we always know and we always ensure that we always respect our customer and try to serve him as good as possible as much as possible so friends keeping this in mind if you have any issue do not please do not hesitate to contact us uh, for any kind of technical issues for maintenance issues how to maintain how to choose the drip irrigation system what kind of drip irrigation system would be better for me gen irrigation system has got a large basket of product we got drip system inline online we got jets we got micro sprinklers mini sprinklers uh, large impact sprinklers rain guns anything you name it and we have in with our with us so we can serve you as good as as much as possible and we we will be happy to serve you as much as possible according to your requirements so thank you very much please contact me for any issues please note down my mobile number it is 
8348402 thank you very much water is life we all need clean water to live to grow crops to thrive but there just isn't enough water or land to feed our hungry world unless we change the way we grow food that's why millions of farmers are turning to jane jane is totally integrated totally innovative farmers helping farmers the company logo reflects our holistic cycle of shared values the sun source of free renewable energy enhanced crops thanks to tissue culture plants and improved inputs water used sparingly and intelligently the land protected and used wisely to deliver more jane has become a worldwide force in irrigation technology the agri value chain and green energy solutions headquartered in jalgaon india in just two generations the company that started with 7000 rupees has become a billion dollar organization the world leader in agro technology jane starts with detailed 3d designs and provides the widest range of irrigation products and solutions in this remote part of the world where there is no electricity jane solar powered pumps provide on demand irrigation through a variety of jane pipes to irrigate the roots of plants produced in jane's own fields and greenhouses we pioneered the use of drip tapes for row crops with the innovative chapin tape thanks to our micro irrigation systems and close work with farmers we help them grow better produce that sells for more we have even created a breakthrough technique to grow rice with drip irrigation the result better yields and better quality israel is known for bringing advanced irrigation to the world and nand and jane led the way with integral drip line and sprinklers jane total integration total technological innovation whether you farm 1 or 100000 acres No one offers a greater variety of products than Jane. On five continents, Jane is transforming the lives of farmers. Millions of farmers, 10,500 associates, more than 1,000 agro specialists, 30 production plants, sales in 116 countries, 7,000 dealers and distributors, global leaders in micro irrigation, mango processing, tissue culture plantlets. Pioneers in solar agro pumping, producing 40,000 kilometers of drip tube every day, with annual revenues exceeding one billion dollars, and revenue growth of 1,400 percent in just 10 years. Why is Jane different? We are a global company that built our business on results, trust, constant innovation, and total integration. We are financially strong. enjoying steady sustainable growth we believe that you need to leave the world a better place than you found it we believe in sustainability we invest heavily in our people our partners and critically our farmers food and energy security is tied to water security but with today's technology no one should ever go hungry and every farmer no matter how small or large can produce more crop per drop There is no need to fight wars over water because if used wisely we can make it last. Water is life and at Jane we are dedicated to improving life everywhere for everyone now and in the future.